welcome to this week's Sunday service. It is our special Christmas service and I want to welcome you. And we've got some fun stuff planned for you. We've got a Christmas skit. We've got special Christmas worship, a recipe, a special craft. And I hope you guys enjoy. So to get started, let's start off in prayer. So everybody close your eyes and bow your head. Thank you, Lord, for the special time that you give us every Sunday to come and tune into your word. I pray that you fill every room that this video is being watched. And I pray over the lives of every single kid and family that is watching us today. In your name we pray, amen. So let's get started. Today we have a special Bible lesson for you and we've got some narrators, special characters that are going to tell us the story of Christmas. So I want you guys to tune in and see what you have to learn. Let's meet the characters. These are your narrators, Angel Gabriel, Elizabeth, and Joseph Jesus, 
and Mary. Amy, Christmas is right around the corner. Aren't you excited? Um, I don't really get that excited for Christmas anymore. There's nothing that special about it. How can you not be excited for Christmas? We celebrate the most important event in all of history. And what is that exactly? Well, let me tell you. A long time ago, in the town of Bethlehem, a savior was born, which was Christ the Lord. Wait a minute, wait a minute, what are you doing? What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm telling you the story of Christmas. Well, I don't know if I believe the story of Christmas. What? You don't believe the story of Christmas? What do you mean? Um, I don't know, it's just I don't think I believe in it. You have got to be kidding me. Well, when I was younger, I believed in Santa Claus, but you know what happened there. Oh man, it's worse than I thought. Okay, so I'll tell you the story of Christmas, and then you can decide if you believe in it or not. But all that matters is that you're gonna know the true meaning of Christmas. So, let's get started. About 2,020 years ago, there was a young woman named Mary. Mary lived in a town called Nazareth. She was engaged to a man named Joseph. Wow, Joseph was a lucky guy. One day, Mary was visited by an angel of God named Angel Gabriel. Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and He will be called the Son of the Most High. How can this be happening? I'm not married yet. The Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Wow! Blessed be the Lord, for He is good. May it be to be as you have said. Even Elizabeth, Mary's relative, is going to have a baby in her old age, for nothing is impossible with God. Elizabeth, blessed you are among women, and blessed is the child you will have. As soon as the sound of your greetings reached my ear, the baby in my womb leaped of joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Wait, who is Elizabeth? Elizabeth, we learned about her about two weeks ago. So after this service, you can go ahead and check it out if you didn't learn about Elizabeth. Okay, yes. Mary spent about three months with Elizabeth and Zechariah, but now it was Mary's time to return back home to Nazareth. But first, I am going to tell you what happened to Joseph. Meanwhile, back in Nazareth, we find Joseph, the man who was to marry Mary, asleep in his bed. Joseph has had a hard day because as soon as Mary got back from visiting Elizabeth, it was obvious to everyone that she was going to have a baby. Mary looked pregnant. Uh-oh. Now, Joseph was a very good man, and so he wanted to be kind and generous towards Mary. But since he knew the baby wasn't his, he wasn't sure what to do next. While he was still considering his options, an angel of the Lord came to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife, and he knew that he had to name their baby Jesus. Hey, so do you believe in the story of Christmas yet? Um, I'm not convinced all the way yet. Okay, no worries. We still have a lot of the story to tell. Okay, so a few months later, Caesar Augustus, the ruler at the time, wanted to count every single person in his empire. So Joseph and Mary needed to travel from the town of Nazareth all the way to Bethlehem, the town of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. 
They traveled a long way and Mary was almost going to have baby Jesus. They couldn't find a place to stay. No hotel, no house, no apartment had a place to stay. Ah, but the baby is almost coming. Joseph asked every innkeeper for a room to stay until finally an innkeeper said, you can stay in the stable out back. In a stable? Are you crazy? That's where they put animals. Yes, in a stable. Our King, our Savior, the Lord of Lords, was laid in a manger and He was born in a stable. In a manger? Are you crazy? That's where animals eat from. Yes, in a manger. Our Lord was born and laid to rest in a manger. That was the most humbling experience that anyone could experience. But even then, what is even the importance of this story? God kept His promise and He sent His Son down to earth for a big plan. And later in the Gospel, we learn that Jesus had a bigger purpose in His life. He was going to die for our sins. And we learn that He is the Messiah, the Savior of the world. So that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but they will have eternal life in heaven with God. And as believers in Jesus, we learn that through the crucifixion and His resurrection, we are given the biggest gift of all. Wow, I did not know this part. Yeah, it's a very important part that a lot of people don't know. So Amy, do you believe in the story of Christmas now? Yes, I do. Yes! But what's next? What's next is that you can accept Jesus in your heart. So we can do that together if you want. Okay, yes. Do you guys believe in Jesus? If you don't or have not accepted Jesus in your heart, I want all of us to close our eyes and bow our heads and say this special prayer. Lord, today we learned about the true meaning of Christmas. And I want to thank you for sending us Jesus and for the greatest gift of all, salvation and eternal life. I ask for forgiveness of my sins and I accept you into my heart. Let me live a life that pleases you and fulfills the purpose you have for my life. From this day on, I will trust and follow you. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing this amazing story with me and our friends. I am so blessed to have learned about this. It has truly blessed me and I'm so excited for this new life I have with Jesus.
celebrate Jesus on Christmas? We celebrate Jesus on Christmas because he was born on that day and it represents Jesus coming down to earth as part of God to give us a chance at eternal life by forgiving our sins. Question, what is the true meaning of Christmas? Well, the true meaning of Christmas is love. In John 3, 16 and 17 it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The true meaning of Christmas is the celebration of his incredible act of love. What is the true meaning of Christmas? Well, the true meaning of Christmas, some people think it's decorating the house, um, making it like all Christmas spirit. And it's okay to do that too. But the, but the main reason for Christmas is the day that Jesus Christ, our Savior, was born. And I'm going to read you a verse from the Bible that's from Matthew 121. And it says, You shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call him Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Um, what this verse is saying is um, God was brought to this world to, for, um, to forgive our sins because us us humans we sin a lot so god so jesus was brought to this world for us and we should appreciate him and i think that's the reason that's the main reason for christmas hi kids it's teacher raquel and today we're gonna have a special time during craft time it's our special christmas craft so to get started, we're gonna need yellow piece of paper, a brown piece of paper, a small flash card, some ribbon, a scissor, a glue stick, and a marker. So let's get started. So first we're gonna start off by creating a star. And we want them to be a little bit big, so we're gonna make it the size of our hand. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a star, and then we're gonna cut out the star from our piece of paper. So our star should look a little something like this. So with our brown piece of paper, we're gonna take our marker and draw a trapezoid. I'll put what it looks like that up here, okay? So now go ahead and cut out your trapezoid and your two small rectangles. So I'm gonna do an extra step for my star to make it a little bit more glittery. You can decorate it, put some glitter on it, get fancy, but I have some glitter tape which I'm gonna use to decorate my star. Alrighty kids, so I'm back and my star is all glittered up. And now we're gonna take our trapezoid and we're gonna put it right at the center like that. So we're gonna go ahead and glue it. So I just put my manger on my star and it should look a little something like that. So now I'm gonna do a little uh, oval and that's going to be for my shape of baby Jesus. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty, so this is my baby Jesus <laughs> and we're going to add a little face. Okay, so this is my baby Jesus and I'm going to go ahead and glue him on top of our manger. So this is what mine looks like so far. And now we're gonna take strips of yellow paper so that we can cut it out so that it looks like straw. And then we're gonna go ahead and glue it on the bottom of the manger. So I'm just gonna cut strips super thin, all different shapes and sizes. 
so that it looks like straw. Okay, now that we have a few pieces of straw, they look like this, we're gonna go ahead and glue it right there. Okay kids, so this is what it looks like. Isn't it super cute? So since it is an ornament, we're gonna use our ribbon and tie. You can tape it or glue it to the back or you can make a hole so that you can make a little knot so that you can hang it on your Christmas tree. So let's go ahead and do that. So this is what our little ornament looks like. And the last step is to add John 316 to the back of your star so that you have a reminder of that Bible verse that reminds us of the purpose Jesus had when he came to earth. I'll put it up on the screen and we can read it together right now. So it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son and that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. And the last thing that I want you guys to add to your craft is the date so that you can remember the year that you made this craft. So let's put 12, 2020. And the next year you're gonna be like, oh, I made this last year. So this is what our star looks like. Isn't it super cute? So now we get to put it on our Christmas tree. So I hope this Christmas ornament serves as a reminder of why we celebrate Christmas. So we hope to catch you guys next week. Bye kids! Should not
God's story, Jesus. So part of God's story, actually the biggest part of God's story, is about how he sent us a rescuer. And it goes like this. Way back in the beginning, God created a perfect world and he made it exactly the way he wanted. It was full of good things like oceans and mountains and giraffes and jellyfish. There was no sickness or sadness or death. And he made people, Adam and Eve, to live in his perfect world with him forever. People were God's favorite creation. In fact, he called everything he made good, but he called people very good. Then something awful happened. They disobeyed God. And then that's when all the wrong things in the world began. Now, even though people disobeyed God, he loves us more than anything. So God planned a rescue. One day, he would send his son to rescue his family from all the wrong things in the world. That way, we could be close to God again. God's family was so excited about this rescuer. They waited hundreds and hundreds of years. They thought the rescuer would be a mighty king or maybe a powerful warrior. Imagine their surprise when the rescuer was born as a little baby. It was Jesus. It wasn't what they had expected, but it was exactly what God had planned. Jesus was completely human, but also completely God. That means he was perfect and never did anything wrong. He ate and slept and had friends just like you and me, but he could also do incredible things that only God can do. And when he was all grown up, he was ready to show the whole world that he was God's son. When Jesus was an adult, he started traveling and doing miracles. A miracle is something amazing that can only happen with God's help. And Jesus did lots of miracles. He went to a party and turned water into wine. He fed 5,000 hungry people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. He calmed a raging storm by telling it to stop. He walked on water. He healed people everywhere he went. He made blind people see and paralyzed people walk. He touched the sick and made their diseases disappear. He even brought a dead man back to life. And he told people that he could do all of this because he was the son of God. Jesus didn't just heal people on the outside. He healed them on the inside too. He forgave their sins. That means they didn't have to be punished for their wrong choices. Instead, they could follow Jesus. Some people didn't like what Jesus was doing. They didn't believe he was the son of God. And even after all the miracles Jesus did, like healing the sick and making blind people see, they still didn't believe him. They actually wanted Jesus to die. And that's exactly what happened. Jesus had to suffer and die on a cross, even though he had never done anything wrong. When Jesus died on the cross, God's family was broken hearted. The rescuer was gone. They wondered how they would ever be close to God again. But then, something incredible happened. Jesus didn't stay dead. He came back to life. He was alive. He is alive. This was God's plan all along. Jesus chose to take the punishment for our sins. He died on the cross so we don't have to. And now anyone can become a part of God's family if we choose to believe that Jesus rescued us. We get to be close to Jesus because he loves us. He loves us when other people don't. He loves us when we feel left out, alone, and hurt. He loves us even when we do wrong things. And this isn't just your ordinary, everyday kind of love. It's the strongest, most powerful, never ending, never changing, always and forever kind of love. And no matter what we do or where we go, he will always be with us. And that's the story of Jesus. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made a perfect world. People messed it up. God had a plan to rescue us. It was Jesus. He did miracles and healed people. He showed everyone that he's the son of God. He died for us, rose from the dead, and forgave our sins. He loves us and nothing will ever change that. And that's a really great part of God's story.
with your parents as easy as one two three you can actually help with decorating some holiday ornament cookies or you can use some cookie dough and you can cut the cookies according to your style um like christmas trees or candy canes or we can make an angel or even a snowman so come on we will be using one of the package of the peppermint chocolate cookie mix, one unsalted stick of butter, and one large egg. After the dough is mixed, form 24 even size balls and bake at a parchment lined cookie in a cookie sheet. Hi boys and girls, I'm back. Alright, so we're going to make more. We're gonna make more circles of cookies. So, so you put, so you put more, more, more dough, and then you shake it like this, and then you place it. These are the peppermint cookie dough. So now we're gonna place them in the oven. It in the oven at 350 for 16 minutes. Time is up. Now we're going to decorate holiday cookies. We have a sprinkle, um, a red, a red icing, a, gr a, a green, yellow icing, a, a beige, a beige icing, some decoration for the cookie. Okay, now that we have the red, 
Now that we have the red finished, we're gonna we're gonna put the green. Okay, now that now that I have this cookie present decorated, it's time to add some ingredients. A sprinkle and snowflakes. Yeah, so we're gonna put this right here. You can decorate it anywhere you like. Anywhere you like. You, you, you or could, however you like. Mm -hmm, you, you could you, you could add... You, you How about some snowflakes? Oh yeah, some snowflakes, yeah. We yeah. have some right here. Mm -hmm. Just sprinkle them. And this is your cookie ornament and your peppermint cookies. Bye, kids. Bye. Merry Christmas. Hi kids, it's teacher Brianna and I wanted to say Merry Christmas and I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful, happy new year. I love you guys so much and I can't wait to see you guys and give you big hugs in person. Blessings, bye. Hola niños, soy teacher Evelyn. Quiero desearles una feliz Navidad. Que la paz de nuestro Señor Jesucristo more hoy y siempre en sus hogares. Y espero verlos pronto. Los extraño, los amo. Que Dios los bendiga. Hasta pronto. Hola niños, les deseamos una feliz Navidad. Que Dios los bendiga y los extrañamos. Y nos veremos pronto. Hi guys, I hope you guys are having a wonderful break now that we're free from school. Tiring, I know, but don't forget to keep praying to Jesus during these hard times and hopefully we'll see you guys next year. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year! Merry Christmas kids! Hello kids, this is teacher Liliana. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and don't forget the reason for this season is Jesus' birth. Our Savior was born. We love you so much and we're praying for you and your families. We hope to see you soon. Bye. Así que pasen una feliz Navidad y los quiero mucho y cuídense. Bye. Hi kids, we're celebrating Christmas. And you guys know why we celebrate Christmas? Because we are celebrating Jesus' birthday. Yes, we remember that Jesus Christ was born as a baby. So can you guys say happy birthday Jesus with us? Okay. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Jesus! Yeah! Merry Christmas! Bye! Merry Christmas, boys and girls. I want to wish you guys a happy New Year's. And I'm praying for you guys that you guys are safe. And also, I miss you guys, and I hope to see you soon next year. Bye! Hola mis niños hermosos, espero se encuentren bien en casita junto a su familia. Les saluda la hermana Cristina con un pequeño mensaje bíblico de la Navidad. Mateo 1.21 Y dará a luz un hijo y llamará su nombre Jesús, porque él salvará a su pueblo de sus pecados. Amén. Ah, espero se la pasen bien en estas fiestas navideñas junto a su familia. Los quiero mucho, los extraño mucho y por favor protéjanse bien. Acuérdense que estamos en una pandemia, así que por favor, si van a salir, siempre con precaución. Los quiero, los extraño, les mando fuertes abrazos y esperemos en Dios que pronto nos volvamos a ver. Bendiciones, feliz Navidad y próspero año nuevo. Hola niños, yo soy la teacher Rosy, en el es teacher Brian y teacher Chris. Desde casita nosotros les enviamos un saludo especial y un abrazo muy fuerte, orando a Dios que ustedes se encuentren muy bien de salud al lado de sus familias, esperando que en esta Navidad celebremos 
la, el nacimiento de Cristo Jesús que es nuestro Salvador y que la paz de Jesús reine en sus casas en esta Navidad. Y nosotros le deseamos ¡Feliz, ¡Feliz Navidad! Y un próspero año nuevo. Bye. Bye. Hi guys, this is teacher Brianna and this is my doggy Bella. Say hi Bella. I just wanted to come on here to wish you guys a happy new year and I hope to see you all soon in 2021 and I hope that the Lord blesses you this year. Bye guys. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. De mi familia a tu familia. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hola, niños. Hola, somos la familia Sariles. Y les deseamos una, una feliz, feliz Navidad. Navidad. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Celebremos esta Navidad, el amor y la paz que Jesús nos da. Su luz brilla en tu corazón. Feliz Navidad. Hola niños, habla Teacher Cristina de Niños en el Camino. Solo les quiero desear una feliz Navidad, un próspero año nuevo y decir que como los extraño y los quiero mucho y hacerles saber que el mejor regalo es nuestro Señor Jesús. Hi kids, this is Teacher Cristina from Niños en el Camino. I just want to say that I miss you so much and love you so much. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And just know that our best gift is our Lord Jesus Christ. Bye. Hi guys, it's Teacher Denise. I just wanted to say Merry Christmas. I hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday. I hope you're enjoying your time off. I hope you're still doing your homework if you have any. I hope you're still listening to your parents. And I also hope to see you guys very, very soon. Okay, so I just wanted to wish you guys Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. God bless you guys. I miss you very much. And hopefully next year we see each other again. Okay, bye, take care. Hey kids, this is Teacher Miss Kimberly. I'm here to wish you guys a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you guys have a great time with your family and loved ones. May God keep blessing each one of you. I love you guys and I miss you and I hope to see you guys soon. Happy Holidays. Bye.